Hi, welcome to the session on Data Lake and Analytics on AWS. My name is Ganesh Raja, and I am a specialist solutions architect for data and analytics on the AWS platform. I'll be talking you through an overview of building a secure and scalable data lake on AWS. We will also see how we can use the data in the data lake for further analytics using services on the AWS platform. Traditionally, analytics was run through a relational data warehouse. It collects data from multiple source systems and produces operational reports. This method of analytics had a few characteristics. It was optimized for relational data sources and it enabled operational reporting on top of the data in the DW. Difficult to scale, rigid schema design, high capex and opex cost. The belief that data is an asset is causing pressure on traditional architectures. It can't be business as usual anymore because these new customer requirements but break the conventional approach. To get the most value from their data, Customers need a scalable, secure, and comprehensive data storage and analytics platform. Customers need to be able to securely store data coming from application and devices in its native format with high availability, durability, at low cost, and at any scale. That is, they need a data lake. Customers need to access quickly and analyze data in a variety of ways using the tools and frameworks of their choice in a high performance, cost effective way without having to move large amounts of data between their storage and analytic systems. Moreover, customers need to go beyond insights from operational reporting on historical data to be able to perform machine learning and real-time analytics to predict future outcomes accurately. Three main factors influence customers to move away from traditional approaches to building a data lake. There has been an exponential growth of data, not only transactional data, but also sensor data and social data. There is also a diversified customer base that needs access to the data. And these people don't have a single access mechanism. Each one requires a different tool to access the data. For example, business analysts need BI tools. Data scientists need notebooks. You should be able to collect anything into a data lake and give flexible access to the data from anywhere in the data lake. You also need to future-proof your data lake and not store your data in any proprietary system. AWS provides the most comprehensive, secure, scalable, and cost-effective service to build a customer's data lake and analytics solution. Customers can store data from any source in a data lake that is secure, highly scalable, and cost-effective using standards-based data formats. Amazon S3 provides an optimal foundation for a data lake because of its virtually unlimited scalability. You can seamlessly and non-disruptively increase storage from gigabytes to petabytes of content, paying only for what you use. Amazon S3 is designed to provide 11 nines of durability. It has scalable performance, ease of use features, and native encryption and access control capabilities. Amazon S3 integrates with a broad portfolio of AWS and third-party ISV data processing tool. Building your data lake on S3 allows you to store all your structured and unstructured data at any scale, giving you unmatched durability. It also gives you object-level fine-grained access control and the broadest set of analytics and ML services. Let us look at a simplified architecture for building a data lake on S3. You have varied set of data sources that generate data at various velocity and volume. To ingest this data, you need a variety of tools. Kinesis for real-time streaming, Direct Connect for low jitter data transfers into AWS from your data center, Database Migration Service to capture changes in your database in real time and stream it into your data lake. 
once your data is stored in the data lake on Amazon S3, you can use many different access layers to access the data. The access layers that you choose depend on who the consumer is, how they are going to consume the data. For example, the business analyst will want to use a data warehouse like Redshift to access the data and a data scientist would need access via an ML service. To consume the data stored in a data lake via a service layer, the user can use a variety of tools either natively available on the AWS platform like QuickSight or API Gateway or use marketplace products like Tableau. Storing the data in the data lake is not enough. You should be able to discover what is there in the data lake for you to consume the data and derive inference from the data. The data grows with the amount of data stored and this is a challenge if the data stored is not easily discoverable to the end users. Users need to be aware of what data is there in the data lake so that they can do analytics on the data. Glue has a data catalog that makes data discoverable and thus minimizes dark data in your organization. The AWS Glue data catalog is your persistent metadata store for all your data assets regardless of where they are located. The data catalog contains table definitions, job definitions and other control information to help you manage your AWS Glue environment. Your metadata that the AWS Glue crawlers collect from your data store is shared among Athena, Amazon Redshift and EMR. This catalog is also searchable and contains connection information and versioning. AWS Glue crawlers connect to your source or target data store, progresses through a prioritized list of classifiers to determine the schema for your data and then creates metadata in your AWS Glue data catalog. The metadata is stored in tables in your data catalog and used in the authoring process of your ETL jobs. You can run crawlers on a schedule, on demand or trigger them based on an event to ensure that your metadata is up to date. Your source data is never perfect for your data lake. There may be many transformations you may want to run. A simple transformation can be just denormalizing data. You may also want to enrich the data from data apparent from other sources. For example, you may want to enrich the order data with weather data to find correlations between orders and weather info. A recent study found that 80% of the time is spent on cleansing or enriching the data before it is made available for any analytics. The question we have to ask ourselves is, if we can make the data preparation easier, can we minimize the time that people are collecting data sets and cleaning and organizing their data? Another component of Glue is the ETL service. We make it easier to do ETL because AWS Glue automatically generates the code to extract, transform and load your data. Merely point Glue to your data source and target and Glue creates ETL scripts to transform, flatten and enrich your data. The code is generated in Python and written for Apache Spark 2.1 environment. Glue also lets you edit the ETL code generated. Glue provides development endpoints for you to edit, debug and test the code it generates for you. You can use your favorite IDE or notebook you can write custom readers, writers or transformations and import them into your ETL jobs as custom libraries. You can also use and share code with other developers in our GitHub repository. Finally, when your code is complete, you can schedule recurring ETL jobs, chain multiple jobs together or invoke jobs on demand from other services like AWS Lambda. AWS Glue manages the dependencies between your jobs automatically, scales underlying resources and retries jobs if they fail. Data enrichment 
always involves a pipelining strategy that takes data from various sources and combines them. For example, you can take business data and combine it with household data like the number of people in a household. This data can be further enriched with PII data if it is made available. The enrichment process also involves classifying the data. Classification can be critical, highly confidential, confidential or public data. As we enrich the data, you will see that we can use public data and create confidential data out of it. Once we have enriched the data, we may have a data mod jobs that will declassify data by ashing PII data and making it available to consumers in the public forum. Access controls for the data are applied at the pipeline stage and service roles define who gets access to data at various stages of the pipeline. For example, nobody gets access to raw data, but progressively through the enrichment process, people get access to the data. Let us see how you can use the analytics tools on the AWS platform to consume the data in the data lake. Starting with the data warehouse and moving on to big data processing, let us explore the tools that are available to use for us. We begin with data warehousing. Amazon Redshift is a fast, fully managed data warehouse that makes it simple and cost effective to analyze all your data using standard SQL and your existing business intelligence tools. It allows you to run complex analytic queries against petabytes of structured data using sophisticated query optimization, columnar storage on high performance local disks and massively parallel query executions. Most results come back in seconds. You can easily resize your cluster up and down as your performance and capacity need changes with just a few clicks in the console or a simple API call. Security is built right into the cluster. You can encrypt data at rest and in transit using hardware accelerated AES-256 and SSL encryption. Isolate your clusters using Amazon VPC and even manage your keys using AWS key management service and hardware security modules. Amazon Redshift Spectrum enables you to run Amazon Redshift SQL queries against exabytes of data in Amazon S3. Redshift Spectrum directly queries data in Amazon S3 using the open data formats you already use, including Avros, CSVs, Parquets, and many other formats. You need to have a Redshift cluster to perform queries on Spectrum. Think of Spectrum when you want to access retired data and join it to the data in Redshift, or access data which has not been loaded into Redshift but is sitting in the data lake. Amazon Athena is an interactive query service that makes it easy to analyze data in Amazon S3 using standard SQL. Athena is serverless, so there is no infrastructure to manage and you pay only for the queries that you run. Unlike Spectrum, you don't need to run a cluster to run Athena queries. Think of Athena when you want to run queries on a vast amount of data that is stored in S3 without loading it into an access layer. For big data processing, Amazon EMR provides a managed Hadoop framework that makes it easy, fast and cost effective to process vast amounts of data across dynamically scalable Amazon EC2 instances. You can also run other popular distributed frameworks such as Apache Spark, HBase, Presto and Fling in Amazon EMR and interact with other AWS data source such as Amazon S3 and Amazon DynamoDB. Think of EMR as a tuned Hadoop for the cloud. It is also monitors your cluster, retrying failed tasks and automatically replacing poorly performing instances. Amazon EMR, you can process large volumes of data that is stored in your data lake without you having to transfer the data into the Hadoop cluster. Data is streamed from your data lake into the Hadoop cluster for processing. When you decouple your data lake from the processing layer, you can run many clusters, each doing a specific job 
using a specific tool from the Apache ecosystem. Think of two teams that want to run different versions of Spark or one team who wants to run Hive SQL with Tess and the other wants to use Spark SQL. Each of these requirements can be satisfied since the data is stored outside the cluster. These transient clusters still use the same data catalog that is stored in Glue or they can also refer to an external data catalog running on RDS MySQL. Let us once again revisit the characteristics of a data lake. You should be able to collect anything, which means you should be able to connect to data sources both batch and real time to ingest the data and also provide infinitely scalable storage which is durable and available. You should be able to dive in anywhere and get flexible access, which means the data lake should be able to run interactive queries from the data lake and also access the data in the data lake using the tool of choice. Future proof the data lake, ability to store data in open source formats and use open source tools to access the data. On top of all this is the pay for what you use model that ensures you never have to provision storage or guest capacity and let the data lake scale as your business grows. To gain hands-on experience with AWS, please watch our instructional videos and explore the self-paced labs. You can also attend our instructor-led classes and learn how to design, deploy, and operate highly available, cost-effective, and secure applications on AWS. You can get more info by visiting the URL aws.amazon.com slash training. AWS also has an extensive partner ecosystem to help you focus on your success and to take full advantage of all the business benefits that the that AWS has to offer. Learn more about how APN partners can help you and find the right APN partner for your needs. Visit the AWS APN booth at our showcase. We have quick starts developed by our partners to create data lakes on AWS, which can be used to start your journey into the big data processing world. Thank you for attending the session. We hope you found it interesting. Do provide us with your feedback and let us know how we can improve the event experience for you in the future.